1959, Hawaii became the 50th state. Optimism was tangible. The economy was booming. Buildings were going up and visitors flocked to paradise. A modern airport was needed to accommodate this influx of tourists. The airfield had already been expanded. The major runway, 826, after the degree headings on the compass, was widened to 200 feet and lengthened to 13,104 feet, over two miles long, making it the longest runway in the world at the time of its completion. But Hawaii needed a proper terminal to bid aloha to the visitors from around the world. In 1959, Governor Quinn broke ground for the New Honolulu International Airport Terminal. A year later, 1.6 million passengers arrived at and departed from Honolulu International Airport. The number almost doubled to 3.4 million in 1966. 22 airlines had requested Trans-Pacific routes. In addition, Pan American Airlines and Boeing announced plans to put 747 jumbo jets into operation. By 1966, the new Honolulu International Airport was already outdated. The airport master plan study of 1968 projected that 18.5 million passengers would arrive in Honolulu in 1985. To handle the increase in tourists and to accommodate the physical requirements of the jumbo jets, the airport needed to renovate its terminal and build another runway. The additional runway had to, above all, increase the capacity of the airport, more landings and takeoffs per hour, with planes landing and taking off simultaneously. Because the runway was required to share the airfield with the United States Air Force, situated next door at Hickam Air Force Base, it had to be wide and long enough to meet Air Force and Federal Aviation Administration standards. And there were two other major concerns. The runway needed to be angled so that jets taking off would not endanger metropolitan Honolulu and far enough away not to disturb the peace and quiet of its residents. In 1971, the airport task force convened by Governor Burns under the guidance of Director of Transportation, Dr. Fujio Matsuda, recommended the building of a reef runway. The offshore airfield would be about the size of Waikiki, over 1,200 acres of land created by 19 million cubic yards of dredged coral. It would accommodate a runway 12,000 feet long, 200 feet wide, running parallel to the main runway, 826, over a mile away at the old airport. The new runway would be called 8 right, 26 left. Finally, it would be connected to the main airfield by two taxiways. Building a large man-made peninsula would be expensive. The funding for this mammoth construction would come from two sources, the Hawaii State Legislature and the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. The final tab for building the reef runway came to $88 million, and the FAA's contribution was significant. In 1970, it seemed that all needs were assessed and all points of view were considered, except for one thing. The plan did not take into account the destruction of a bird habitat of an endangered species, the aeo, and other water birds which fed on the mudflats offshore and in nearby Keehi Lagoon. For years, the aeo, the Hawaiian stilt, had made its home on the wetlands where streams met the ocean around the island. But now, the construction of the reef runway threatened a prime feeding area. At this point, mitigation was recommended to the Department of Transportation. The Navy offered two areas on Pearl Harbor's West Lock for environmental mitigation, Honouliuli and Wayava. Obtaining the land for these wildlife refuges was a major hurdle towards saving an endangered species. Getting the money for creating these breeding habitats was another challenge. At this time, Environmental advocates, including the Audubon Society and Life of the Land, questioned the entire scope of the reef runway's impact on the environment. Among the advocates, a member of the Audubon Society, was a McKinley High School teacher, Betty Nagamine. She specifically addressed how the Department of Transportation would fund the creation of two bird habitats in Pearl Harbor and in compliance with the newly enacted NEPA. She proposed that the FAA help with the cost for mitigation. To everyone's surprise, 
Washington agreed. Betty Nakamina's efforts solved the problem of funding for the creation of bird habitats at Honouliuli and Wayava. Her initiative also set a precedent for future FAA funding of environmental mitigation for the rest of the country. Finally, construction of the reef runway began in 1973. A meeting of the minds among the directors of state and federal organizations had occurred. The Department of Transportation Airports Division, Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Federal Aviation Administration, the U.S. Navy and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service all came together and agreed to help save a bird, the Aeo, and its fellow endangered species by creating a safe habitat to feed and breed. In 1977, the largest airport reef runway of its kind was completed. It began with the reality that Hawaii had become the hub of air travel in the Pacific after World War II. The reef runway was built to meet this challenge by increasing the capacity of air traffic. During the course of planning, a bird and its habitat became a tipping point where progress needed to be balanced by a concern for nature. This challenge literally halted the construction of the reef runway. In order to proceed, the leaders of this project had to find it in their hearts to do the right thing, what Hawaiians call pono. Most importantly, the number of aeo is on the rise. In 1973, Dr. Andrew Berger, ornithologist from the University of Hawaii, estimated the total number of Hawaiian stilts in the islands to be 1,000 birds. In 2005, the revised recovery plan for Hawaiian water birds estimated there were about 1,350 aeo in the islands, an approximate 35% increase. A significant increase in major part due to the two habitats created by the airport reef runway. These habitats set a precedent for later statewide habitats which have, over the past 30 years, collectively contributed to the rise in water bird populations. To this day, the Pearl Harbor habitats ensure ideal nesting places for the aeo and other wetland birds to safely breed, preserving and protecting endangered species. The Honouliuli and Waiawa National Wildlife Refuges are symbolic of Hawaii's love and respect for the land. In 1977, Hawaii had built a world-class airport with a first-of-a-kind runway quiet and safe enough to be near a major metropolitan area, long and wide enough to provide landing for even the space shuttle. And most importantly, this project represents how various state and federal government agencies and departments can work together to provide for the needs of Hawaii's tourist industry and also protect its environment. The Hawaii State model sums it up. For Maokeao Kaina i Kapono, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness.